So how long ago now did you guys make the Eon GCHD product originally? So our first version of the GCHD came out in 2018. Wow. Uh, okay. that, yeah, that was with our Mark One version, which was a much simpler uh, model. It just had yeah. the HDMI coming out of it, but it hit it off pretty well. You know, everyone seemed to really like it, and that's awesome. kind of what inspired our other products. Awesome, very cool. And so you guys, you've been involved in speedrunning yourself before, right? Yeah. So uh, early on, I've been I've been into retro basically my entire life, and after kind of like the big speedrunning explosion, like when Stiglemic was running mm -hmm. Mario sixty four and everything, that was okay. kind of the era that I got into, like the Switch era. Um, I started running Mario Kart or Super Mario 64 for a while, like 16 star. And, yeah. Yeah. And I don't know. It was like, it was something that I did like slowly originally just because I thought it was cool that you could beat the game that early. Um, and then I was like, oh, let's see if I could learn a couple of these tricks and Definitely. try to get faster. And it was cool to figure that stuff out and get good at it, you know? Yeah. That's really cool. I actually got into speedrunning myself around 2016. I was trying to play League of Legends online. Oh, okay. And I was really terrible at streaming it, <laughs> but I switched over to streaming speedrunning Pokemon. Yeah. And that caught on a lot better. So awesome. I'm really excited I made that switch here. Yeah, definitely. I mean, during that time, I feel like it was right around then that all of the big streamers really started to, uh, to take hold, you know, like ZFG mm -hmm. and all these guys. Like a lot of those old Nintendo games, I think, really started to hit it off. Yeah, yeah. And since we're talking here with Taskbot today, what is yeah. your first memory and experience of seeing a Tas, especially at like a GDQ type of event? Yeah, for sure. So I mean, when I uh, when I was getting into speedrunning Mario sixty four, uh, you would obviously like go on YouTube, try to look up strategies and stuff. And I remember seeing a bunch of videos come up with like you know TAS, and I'm like, what is this? And then after looking into it, once you start watching a Tas video, you quickly realize that it's like this is not like normal. <laughs> like people can't do this kind of stuff, and but it's super fascinating. So it was really like through YouTube and uh, and watching like tutorial videos of like kind of the things that could be possible. Mm -hmm. um, that was really sort of my first exposure. And then, yeah, I mean, it, you started to see events like that start to tack on to, you know, uh, Awesome Games on Quick and Summer Games on Quick. So, yeah, that was kind of like my first brush with it was just yeah. looking up strategies and seeing tasks kind of by accident. That was how I saw it first, too. I saw it at an I think it was AGDQ 2018. I saw it doing a super monkey ball yeah. task. And then when I went back to next year, I found them in person, started hanging out with them. And they were like, oh, you're perfect here. So yeah, that's awesome. It's been since then I've been doing the task by myself. So yeah. uh, we've got Swiss here. And yes. Uh, the Eon products are great at showing the, the video quality that Swiss helps enable yeah. for uh, restoring these uh, retro games. So if we go into Swiss, we can go into a Game Boy interface copy yep. that is preloaded to point at one of our passes. So okay. that's one of the features of Game Boy interface that it can run tool assisted speed run movies off of the SD card memory card capabilities. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, GBI is awesome. And there's so much that you can do with it. And it really is like the like most premium way to see Game Boy stuff like on a big screen. Yeah, definitely. So now if we go to this copy, this one's got a CLI pointed already at the no safe corruption yellow run. Okay. So we run that and we take out the controller for comedic effect. Yeah. <laughs> now we can see that there is nobody playing the game. Yeah. That's awesome. And we see the controller buttons. Uh, Game Boy Interface has the uh, oh, like, like the input display. input display there coming through live. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, I haven't seen it done like this. This is pretty rad. Yeah, there's a way to actually in the CLI to position where the input goes like that. Yeah. It default goes over the top of the middle of the game. And so you can make it off the left on the um, Game Boy and Game Boy Color ones. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. So this is a task that you put together? Yeah, this is my own uh, task of yellow, no safe corruption. So Very cool. the safe corruption ones, you actually can't show the task verified. Yeah. This is the way to verify the power off and on behavior. Okay. okay. But we can still verify the no safe corruption variant. And that was just fast options you saw. There. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty all awesome. At once. How long did it take you to put one of these together? Because I've never built a task myself, so I'm, I'm not sure like what really the process is to get it done. Yeah, these no save corruption tasks, they're a little bit shorter, it's only about 10 minutes. So that one only took me a couple months. And it was also kind of a, once you do something wrong on the internet, everyone wants to correct you type thing. Yeah, so of course. It was like a month of me doing it and showing it, and it was wrong and not fast enough. And then there was another month of refining it from all the great feedback I got from the community. So yeah. A couple of months for this one. Okay. And then the glitchless one that beats the game in an hour and 36 minutes, that was like a six-month project the first time. And then the same thing, there was a three-month revision and then another three-month revision after that. Oh, so. wow. It's probably awesome. a year of time. Yeah. It's awesome how strong the community is to, to really kind of like come together and, and really make it as optimal as possible and, you know, find every opportunity to, to make it just that little bit faster, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's cool. So we're just now starting to be able to do some passes of Game Boy Advance games. 
really? as well as Game Boy and Game Boy Color. There's a, a new emulator called GBA Hawk being made that is accurate enough to do some Game Boy Advance stuff. Oh, that's so cool. So okay. it's, it's not quite accurate enough, uh, or really it's more that the, the games are not stable enough to always run the same way because their uh, flash save deteriorates over time. Oh, really? And the, the save gets slower and slower to read from. That's a really unique problem to try to solve for. It, like, is there any strategies now that people are thinking about how to, how to yeah. fix that? Or? So the emulator has the ability to set like custom save RAM read timings okay. so that you can at least try to hit one like temporarily while the cartridge is in its current state, and then it will continue to deteriorate, but at least you've captured how it worked that one time. Gotcha. What are the first games that they're looking to, to do in GBA? Is it mostly the, the Pokemon stuff? or uh, Pokemon actually is still like, it's one of the hardest ones to get because there's just so much precise random number generation. Yeah. We have uh, synced the Ruby task back through the first couple of gyms now okay. uh, on that system. Uh, but we're, yeah, we're still working on Pokemon. A lot of the Metroid-type games. Okay. Tons of, I think there's a Dragon Ball game that's being worked on. Oh, uh, like Legacy of Goku or something yeah. like that? Very yeah, cool. Yeah, one of those Very games. Cool. So, do you have any other, like, Game Boy or Game Boy Advance games that you would love to see, Task, that you haven't seen yet? Oh, man. I mean, so I'm a big fan of the Mega Man games. So seeing something like Mega Man Zero, and those, those games in particular are really cool because they're almost like fighting games in the way that you have to like the way you engage with certain enemies. Mm -hmm. So to see something like that really optimized, and I imagine it wouldn't be too crazy because it's mostly just like precise platforming. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'd probably look to see something like that. You know, when I got into speedrunning, I was following a lot of like Mega Man X speedruns, like okay. uh, uh, Caleb Hart and all these guys. Like, yeah. yeah, so it was fun to to watch those games develop. And yeah, Mega Man Zero would be a really, really cool one to see uh, going in that way. There was, a, uh, there was a streamer that I watched that did uh, all of the Mega Man Zero games. It was pretty rad, but... Yeah, to see it really optimized in the w only way to task him, like, that would be really cool. Yeah. yeah. Well, this is TI Kevin 83 or Travis with the Taskbot and Task Videos teams here. And we're talking with uh, the Eon team and Justin from the Eon team about okay. tasks and speedruns. So thank you, Justin, for having uh, this time to talk to us. It's it absolutely amazing. It's absolutely my pleasure. Yeah. I love to see the work that you guys do and can't wait to see more. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you guys for watching. Bye.